If there's a place that knows a thing or two about Mediterranean cuisine, it's Bellamy's Restaurant and Bar. They've been around for 23 years and you're gonna love it. There's no pretense, you don't have to be all dressed up. You can come casual or dressed as you like and uh, you're welcome and they treat you like, uh, like gold. Today on Megan's Menu, we are at Bellamy's Family Restaurant and Bar and joining me is Chef Bob. We are making a cabbage casserole soup. That's right. So it's basically like a cabbage roll in a soup? Pretty much, without the rice, yeah. Uh, first, uh, we've already started uh, sauteing the ground beef. We got it uh, about 50% here. Okay. And then we're going to have the spices before we add anything else. Sure. Two ounces of basil. Okay, so we got some basil. We got a cup of dried oregano. A cup? Wow. No it's fool be a around lot, here. So have a cup of garlic puree. Chopped carrots. Okay, so we got some carrots. Yeah. Uh, chopped onions, celery. And then we're going to saute that for a little while. Okay. We have a nice little rainbow going on in the bowl. We have the water. So once this reduces down, how much um, mass in this bowl do you think we're going to lose? Not that much or just a not little bit? Not that much, not that much. Okay. Nope. We're going to add tomato puree, approximately six cups. Could you use, um, heaven forbid, a pre-canned tomato sauce? Yep, yep. You could, okay. You could, yes. Just because that's something everyone has in their pantry. Now we're going to add the uh, uh, chicken soup base. You can use uh, bouillon. Stock, okay. Chicken stock instead of uh, the base. So that's mixed really well. And then we're going to add the cabbage. The, the star ingredient to the soup. And this is a lot. But as it cooks down, cabbage always gets thinner and smaller. We're just going to let that uh, come to a boil, and then a, a rolling boil. Okay. And we're going to let that go for a while. And then it's pretty much ready for dinner. And then we get to eat it? We'll have some, yes. That's really what I'm looking for. Awesome. <laughs> Word on the street is our cabbage casserole soup is finally done. There we which go. Which means I get to eat it. Enjoy. Thanks, Bob. Careful, it's hot. Mmm. Don't tell my grandma, but this is better than my grandma's cabbage roll casserole <laughs> soup. This is great. I love the flavor. I love the color. And honestly, cabbage soup is one of those things that you may not order on a menu, but if you come to Bellamy's, I highly recommend ordering it because it has such a comforting flavor that just reminds me, reminds me of my childhood and probably a lot of you of your childhood. Mmm. You are going to love this. By running a business, I usually don't have very much time to pack a lunch, so this is actually uh, my second kitchen. I come here probably about two or four times a week, and uh, I know exactly what to order, or sometimes the waitress just goes ahead and orders for me, and uh, sit down and do a little bit of paperwork, and back to work I do. Up next on the menu, we are making calamari with tzatziki sauce. Now, okay, Chef Bob, I'm going to let you say tzatziki because I don't say it right. How do you say it? Tzatziki. One more time? Tzatziki. Tzatziki. <laughs> Whatever. That's how, That's what we're making. Yes. Okay, so we have in here, tell us what we two have. Liters, we have two liters of sour cream. Okay, sour cream. Right. Uh, what I'll get you to do is uh, grate that cucumber here for me. That I can do. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to add salt. So and this is... About a teaspoon of salt. Okay. So this is basically just like a cheese grater. I'm using the, the bigger exactly. blade. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That way you just get a little bit of cucumber in every dip. I think. Yep. You got about uh, one ounce of of uh, fresh of uh, dill. And we're gonna mix that up. Now, is dill something that's classic in tzatziki? Oh yes. It is. Yes. yes. Okay. There's a lot of different uh, variations and styles of how people make it. And, 
but for us, uh, uh, this is very popular with our uh, sour cream. Uh, some people use uh, yogurt in uh, some places. Uh, so we got half a cup of garlic puree and half a cup of lemon juice. Okay. Add that. Now, do you want me to add all this yep. shredded cucumber in there? Yep. Throw okay. That in there. Perfect. It's a little messy. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Welcome. Now we're gonna mix that up really well. I usually like to let it sit overnight. Another thing that gets better with time. Another thing that gets better with age, that's right. I can really smell the garlic, Bob. Yep. Not shining the garlic here, that's for sure. No. Very popular with Greek restaurants. Absolutely. All right, so while we're letting that sit, yeah. we have uh, flour, and we're going to make uh, calamari. OK. Right. What is your trick with your calamari? Uh, we have our flour base, and we use seasoning salt, Okay. garlic powder, and fresh ground pepper. And then we're gonna mix that together. Give it a little stir. A little so stir. this is basically um, what we're gonna be coating our calamari with. Exactly. That's gonna give it the crunch. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So we got that mixed up. All right. And now we have the squid tubes for the calamari. Okay, perfect. Let's just put this down and let it hang out for perfect. a little bit. Good. And then what I do is cut the ends off and cut them into about half inch pieces. Then you guys can all have some calamari too. Perfect. Yes. Okay, so we have the calamari, now you're coating it. Now we're coating it. Okay. And we're just gonna make sure it's really well mixed. Give it a good little shake. Yep. There you go. All right, now we're just gonna throw that in there. There we go. Awesome. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna cook this in the fryer. Approximately 90 seconds to two minutes. Opa, look at that go. <laughs> okay, Bob, how's the calamari looking? All right, it is done. Oh, we'll golden just brown, just the way we like green. it. There we go. Nice and crispy. And then we're gonna add green onion and red onion. All right, and then we're gonna take tzatziki. Okay. Approximately four ounces of tzatziki per portion. There we go. And that is our that calamari. That is your calamari. And Bob, guess what we get to do right now? We get to have a piece. We get to have a little taste. All right. Don't be shy, dig on in. Mmm. Grip. Perfect. Perfectly cooked, not rubbery. Nice golden texture, and the calamari is cooked perfectly. And I have to say, I think we did a pretty good job on this. I think so. Tzatziki. Congratulations. Thank you. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind the scenes footage, and exclusive news. Call 206-888-8888.
12 Stone Creations for your home repairs, renovations, and maintenance. From small repairs to large projects, we've got you covered. For more details, visit us at 12stonecreations.com or call us at 204-599-3357. a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you. Up next on the menu, we have our chicken souvlaki. So Bob, how do we do this here? Uh, first, we're gonna marinate about three pounds of uh, uh, chicken tenders. Okay. Uh, we use uh, olive oil, garlic, a uh, bit of Greek spice, okay. seasoning salt, and we let it marinate overnight. Uh, here we have our skewers and we marinate them in water. Um, okay. Soak them in water because uh, they're bamboo. And we and, don't want them to burn. Uh, well, we also don't want them to splinter right. it's easy and get stuck with it. No one likes wood splinters in their mouth. No, we don't. Or in your fingers while you're skewering. So we're going to go. We're going to go right through the very center of the chicken all the way up. And you put on three to four pieces depending on the size. We usually use about four ounces of chicken. So it covers the whole skewer like that. And here we have our garlic butter. We use the flat top generally, but for people at home, uh, you can use a frying pan. So a little bit of butter, a little nope. bit of garlic, throw it in a pan. That's right. Uh, usually a little bit of oil in there so it doesn't uh, stick to the pan. Okay, and so the butter doesn't burn. That's right. And then we're going to let it slowly um, cook that way. And every time I turn it, I'll use a little bit of seasoning salt and fresh lemon. Okay. So I'll just take a little bit of seasoning salt and a little bit of fresh lemon. So every time, not a lot, just enough to get going. Turn that around. A little bit more seasoning salt, just a light sprinkle. And I like to give it kind of like a glaze because of the seasoning salt and the, right. and the lemon. And then we just let that cook for a while. Okay, so here we have our magnificent chicken souvlaki. Yep. Bob, what do, what do we need to add here? A few lemon twists on top of your chicken. And then you just squeeze it at your own will. Do you ever eat it with just off the skewer? Yes. Yep. I yeah. do. Yep. You can eat it off the skewer. Well, I think I'm gonna. I am gonna go with cutlery. Okay. Oh, oh, simply because I have it. <laughs> Get a little bit of that sauce. Mmm. The chicken tender makes all the difference. It's actually quite a bit more tender than the breast. And the one thing that I'm really picking up, Bob, is the fresh lemon and the brown butter. This is definitely a chicken treat if you're in the mood for one. Mmm. Well, this is delicious. Thank you so much for showing us how to make this. Now, if you want to create your own chicken soup blocky, now you know how. The soup blocky here is just always done to perfection, and the spices on here are just really, really good. Chicken is always nice. Salad, fresh, always fresh. Um, Really good greens, yeah. Okay, so next on the menu is apparently one of Bob's favorite desserts. My favorite. And this is the deep fried cheesecake. Uh, we're gonna start with a lemon inch tortilla. We're gonna egg wash it. So it's a delicious dessert is what you meant. It's, it's a very delicious dessert. Okay. There's still a lot of them. Okay, so we have our just a classic tortilla, right, yep. and we're adding just some egg wash on it. Just some egg wash to start here. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to end up doing both sides. 
but I have a cinnamon and icing sugar mixture. Okay. And we're just gonna sprinkle that. Uh, anybody that has a, uh, their own little deep fryer at home can do this also. And we're gonna roll that like that. Okay. And keep the sides in. So our cheesecake is a vanilla chocolate. Vanilla chocolate. And we even have an Oreo bottom. That's right. Then we're gonna roll that up like that. Very good. So a nice uniform. And what I do is... So why is the egg wash important? Uh, it gives it a nice glaze. It holds it together properly. Got it. And it keeps everything inside. Then what I do with all my uh, cheesecake is I'll wrap them and I'll refrigerate them. So when I'm ready to do them, they won't fall apart in the fryer. All right, and here I have one that's been sitting in the fridge for a few hours, all ready to go. Okay, and we're gonna drop it in the fryer. And it takes about two, three, four minutes. Okay, so we have our cheesecake. It's ready for the tasting. That's right. Take it out. So again, we had it in the deep fryer for two or three minutes. It's gonna take a little bit of, uh, for us, we use our fresh chocolate. Okay, chocolate sauce. Yep, just Just melt some chocolate it. chips down with a little whipped cream. Then you got chocolate sauce. Calvert chocolate sauce in this stuff. Oh, you're yep. making it all pretty, Bob. They're all pretty. Yeah. We're gonna cut it in half. Be careful, it gets very hot. Okay. So, Bob, is this um, something that you would eat with your hands? Or uh, that you would eat with? I'd use a fork or knife. You would, I okay. Would, yeah. You can, it gets kind of messy, obviously. But, and then we place four pieces in the center of the plate. And then we're just gonna use fresh, real whipped cream. Wow, Bob, cinnamon. this looks amazing. Okay, add cinnamon and icing cinnamon. sugar. Cinnamon Same and thing ice. we just put uh, on the inside. Okay. And that is it. Cinnamon and icing sugar. Yes. Okay, Chef Bob, this is my first time having deep fried cheesecake. Any tips? Uh, use your fingers. I think the baby will. This will be the baby's favorite. This will be the baby's favorite. Use, Use your my fingers. fingers. Use your fingers. Okay, you just grab a grab a piece. Just grab a piece. Okay, Bob, Lots of whipped I think cream. I think you, you should grab a piece too. Okay. Cheers. Mm, cheers. Here we go. Ooh. That's good. Ooh. That is tasty. It is. I'm loving the hint of cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I love the chocolate, and I have to say, I absolutely love the crunch that you get on the outside. Mm -hmm. You're just going right to town on that thing, Bob. Mm -hmm. Like I maybe, said, maybe this is a, my favorite. This is this is this is Bob's favorite, That's right. and there's definitely a reason. Yeah. So if you want to have this awesome deep fried cheesecake, come and see Chef Bob at Bellamy's. You're gonna love it. You're more than welcome. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind the scenes footage, and exclusive news. Creations for your home repairs, renovations, and maintenance. From small repairs to large projects, we've got you covered. For more details, visit us at 12stonecreations.com or call us at 204 599 3357.
own or manage a restaurant that you would love to have featured on Megan's menu? If so, email us and tell us everything about your establishment. But hurry, our next season is booking up fast. If you're interested in being on the show or working with us behind the scenes, we have volunteer opportunities available and we would love to hear from you. Next on the menu, we are making one of my mama's all-time favorite desserts and this is baklava. Now this is obviously a traditional Greek dessert. What, it, what is it about this dessert that you love, Bob? Oh, I love the sweetness, love the nuts, uh, everything about it. Or how about, about all the butter? All. Lots of butter. Very fattening. <laughs> yep, but it's very delicious and that's how we're gonna make it. Okay, so phyllo pastry. Now, phyllo pastry is one of those things that not a lot of people like to work with because it is a little finicky. It's time sensitive, it dries out very quickly, so you have to move fast with it. So we're gonna move fast and if you're doing this at home, put a nice tea towel on it with that's a little bit damp and then it won't get dried up. Exactly. But right. if it's too wet, then it gets soggy and then you're In trouble. pooped. <laughs> okay, so we have our phyllo pastry, so right. let's I'm gonna watch the master make his baklava. All right, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it and hang it over the edges a few inches. Okay, so right here on the pan, we have some butter on the bottom. Pre, yep. Yep. Just gonna make sure it hangs over, because after we get the filling in, we have to fold it over. And then oh, put more that's the on trick, top of that. so it, we don't lose anything that, on, that comes out the sides. That's right. Good tip. So we're gonna put three layers like this for the overhang. And do we butter every layer? Every layer has to be buttered. No joking around here, Bob. No. Nope. All right, lots of butter. So um, when the Greek grandmas come in here, what do they have to say about this baklava that you make? Well, it's... Uh, do they like, do they approve? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Because they would be the true test, Bob. That's right. And we, we go through quite a bit of it. I can imagine. Yeah. And then... Some more butter? <laughs> more butter, every layer. And then it helps, uh, it makes it flaky in between the layers. Yeah. Well, and butter's so great because it will naturally add that creaminess that, you know, makes everything melt in your mouth. Okay, so this is now our fourth layer of phyllo. Right, we're gonna do one more layer. And our fifth layer of butter, if you're counting. This is definitely not one of those desserts that um, you should be if you're on the cabbage soup diet. Hey, no, nope, nope, that's right. Uh, <laughs> definitely stay away from this one. And probably our next one, too. All right. Uh, so now we have walnuts and cinnamon. Okay. All right. We have about uh, uh, nine cups of uh, walnuts and about a tablespoon and a half of cinnamon. Okay. All right. And we're just going to. So really, just can. just make sure your walnuts have a nice coating of cinnamon on them. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And then we go another layer. Okay. Now so now over. we're going to fold it over. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fold it over carefully. So just like right that. To the edge. How am I doing, Bob? Good. You're doing Good. awesome. And it right to the edge. Yeah. So I think we're what on our tenth layer. About our tenth layer. And then okay. we're going to add the rest of the walnut mixture. There we go. So now, how long do we cook this for? We're going to cook this at about 300 degrees, 320 degrees for about an hour and a half. But before we do that, we're going to cut it. You cut it before? We cut it before. And then when we're done cooking, We'll make the sauce after this and pour it over top after it's cooled down a bit. Okay. And then it soaks in and then we, uh, we refrigerate it and then we don't use it until the next day. Got it. 300 degrees, 60 minutes, actually 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Yep. That's right. All right. I'm just going to throw that in there and we'll let the timer go. Okay, so up next we have our baklava baking in the oven. So Bob, we are gonna make the baklava syrup. Right. Now, why is this an important part of the baklava? Uh, after the baklava is done, uh, we're gonna cool this uh, syrup down and we're gonna put it on top of the hot baklava. So we can only do cold on hot or hot on cold. That is. So we want hot baklava, cold syrup. Exactly. Or hot syrup on cold, cold baklava. baklava. That's right. Got it, okay. So right. we, we have, have four, some... Four, four cups of water. Four cups of water, All right. okay. Then we're gonna add six cups of sugar. Six cups of sugar. Six cups of sugar. We have cinnamon sticks. Okay. So uh, we're giving our, our simple uh, syrup is stir here. Right. 
and we'll bring that up again. In here we have four cups of water, six cups of sugar, two cinnamon sticks, a tablespoon of vanilla extract, and we have half a lemon. And we're just going to squeeze that in. There we go. And half an orange. We'll get a little more citrus flavor, natural. And now we're going to let this reduce down. I'll give this a little stir here, Bob. Thank you. And a third of a cup of honey. Okay, a third of a cup of honey. And we're going to let this reduce down. And we'll stir every once in a while. And that's it. Okay, so we have our beautifully golden brown baklava. We pulled it out of the oven. We've let it cool a bit, right, Bob? Yep. And now we're going to add our syrup that basically makes everything taste delicious. That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some, we're going to drizzle over everything multiple times. And we're going to let it soak in. And we're going to do this multiple times. And then we let it sit to the side. We're going to cover it. And importantly, you will uh, let it refrigerate for at least 48 hours. Okay. So if it's if it's uh, if it's if the syrup has to be cold if the baklava is hot. And if the baklava is cold, the syrup has to be hot. That's right. There we go. Okay, so here we have our finished baklava. Now this has been cooled. That's right. And now it's warmed That's right. for us to eat. That's right. And we're gonna add a little bit of additional syrup on the top. That's right. So we're going to add a little bit of syrup on top. I'll give it extra flavor, which is sweet. And then a little bit of icing sugar. A little bit of cinnamon in there. A little bit of cinnamon in there, just a hint. And that's it. Oh my goodness, Bob. This looks amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, I cannot welcome. wait to dig in and try this baklava. Thank you. 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 Bellamy's Family Restaurant and Bar is not only a local hotspot, it's a great place to come for all the Mediterranean favorites, such as this, baklava. You're gonna love it. Couldn't write down all those yummy recipes in time? MeganDuffy.ca has everything online, complete with tips from Megan and Chef. Also, be sure to connect with us on social media to get a sneak peek at upcoming episodes, behind-the-scenes footage, and exclusive news.